Hi drillers and welcome to my backyard. We've been doing a lot of reading about energy lately and I just wanted to try to clarify a few things and hopefully help you guys understand a little bit better. So we've been talking about this idea of joules and joules are a term that we use a lot in physics. Um, joules are related to work and work is like this. Uh, force, so some sort of force measured in newtons times the distance, right? Meters maybe. So a one f newton force pushed over one meter would be equal to one joule. Well, we can translate that in a lot of different ways, and you're kind of wondering, like, how does this pertain to chemistry, right? Well, let's go and see if we can kind of follow the rabbit trail and see where this leads us. So, if I have this idea of force is in newtons, um, the units of a newton are kilograms and meters per second squared. So, if you take physics next year, you'll learn all about gravity, and gravity is measured in terms of acceleration. Um, and that's in meters per second squared. And if we add a mass to that, now we have kilograms. So that's where we get this idea of newtons. Well, if I take a newton and I multiply it by a distance, then I end up with some sort of work. And that work is measured in joules. Now well, let's take this a little bit further. So what else can joules help us with? Well, a joule is uh, equal to one newton times one meter. And a joule is also equal to one, time, one watt times one second. Well, you might have heard of watts in terms of electrical power. So if you were to, um, say, look up your power bill, as you see here on the screen, then your power bill is going to be shown in terms of kilowatt hours per day or kilowatt hours. And that's how PG&E bills you, is in terms of kilowatt hours. And if we look closely here at this bill, um, the amount varies from month to month, but it's always measured in kilowatt hours. And, and that's the number of, we could basically break that down in terms of um, joules, which is a watt times one second. And so we think about kilowatt hours, that'd be a thousand watts um, over in terms of hours and not necessarily seconds. So a kilowatt hour is actually quite a bit of power. Now if we also look at joules, we can say, hey, this is also related to power in terms of voltage and amps. Um, so voltage, as you can see here on the board, is the um, amount of energy that's like being pushed through a wire maybe. So the, the force that's behind it. And then the amps is the flow or the amount of energy that can be moving through. And so if I take volts times amps and I multiply that by seconds, again, kind of like watts, then I end up with joules. Now we were looking at things like joules in terms of a rock rolling down a hill. Um, that takes us right back to that original physics definition, right? The force times distance. But what does that have to do with chemistry? You know, the idea is kind of this. Um, if we're taking a look in terms of chemistry, we can um, look at that same rock rolling down the hill and that's going to create some sort of heat. Um, so as that rock rolls, um, it's going to be generating velocity and speed. Um, we can notice that as kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is equal to one half um, mass times velocity squared. Well, let's look at the units for that just a little bit more. So mass is in kilograms and velocity squared is meters squared over seconds squared. Also, we can look at that also as kilograms times meters per second squared times meters again. And we end up with the same sort of thing um, right back here at the top. The same idea of joules over and over again. Now, what if all that heat and, or what if all of that energy wasn't converted into necessarily kinetic energy, but we converted it into heat energy as well. So we have kinetic energy and we have heat energy and that's where chemistry starts to come in. And so there was a man by the name James Joule and that's exactly what he did. So I'm gonna show you a Vitamix commercial. Um, I put it down in the, the description down below. You guys can click on that Vitamix commercial. Um, it's also on Google Classroom. So um, click on that Vitamix commercial and what you'll see is you'll see a blender and all it's doing is it's moving really, really fast. And that blender generates heat. That heat is in the form of friction. But what we can see is they're able to actually boil the soup um, because of that extra heat that's being produced because of the friction inside the chocolate, inside the water, inside the um, soup, whatever it might be. Um, so heat um, is formed because of friction. Well, now what if we look at that in terms of heat reduced, 
are produced by a chemical reaction. Well, we can measure that in terms of joules. Um, we can also measure it in this other form um, that you've probably seen before, and that is calories right here. So one joule is equal to 4.184 calories. Now, that's not the same exactly as the back of your food. Um, I have an oatmeal container here. I guess I'm lucky to still have oatmeal. That seems to be kind of hard to find. But if you take a look here, um, hopefully it focuses well, but the oatmeal is, has 150 calories. Well, that's actually 150 kilocalories. Now, those kilocalories, that means that that one kilocalorie can boil, can raise the temperature of one liter of water by one degree Celsius. So one kilocalorie can raise the water temperature by one degrees C. And that would be for one liter of water. So if I have one liter of water and I use one kilocalorie, I should be able to raise that water um, by one degree Celsius. Now if I have my oatmeal and it's 150 kilocalories, that means that it should either raise 150 liters of water by one degree Celsius, or I should be able to raise one liter of water by 150 degrees Celsius. It works either way. Um, so you can see maybe where we might be going with these reactions and these calculations. Now as we move forward, um, we can think and we can start to think about reactions we've done in the past. Uh, the baking soda and the vinegar reactions, those, were, those got cold and so they were removing heat from the air and so we can sort of think about that, like how much heat was used during the reaction? Uh, how much cooler did the liquid get? Or if I were to say set some food on fire, um, that would generate heat. And how much water could I heat up um, by burning that food? And if we get to actually go back to class, then we'll get to do some of these experiments where we'll burn food and find out how much heat does that actually generate. And so I hope that you're able to see, let's kind of really quick review, this idea of joules comes from physics where we have a force times a distance and one joule is equal to um, one Newton force over a one meter distance. So if I barely push on something and I push it for one meter, um, one Newton of force isn't a lot. So if I barely push on something over one meter, that would produce um, one joule of energy. And then that energy can be also looked at in terms of watts, and that's where we get the idea of electrical energy. And one watt equivalent to lighting up a one watt LED light bulb, so a little LED light bulb for one second. Um, that would be one joule. So a one LED light bulb, or one watt LED light bulb for one second, um, that would be equivalent to one joule. A joule's really not that much energy, right? So we should be seeing it's a pretty small amount of energy. Now, we also relate joules to calories, and we also relate calories to our food. And our food is measured in kilocalories, so 1,000 calories equals one kilocalorie. Let's probably write that down. So 1,000 calories Right, so just, there's a lot of kilocalories, a lot of calories in just one calorie. Um, and so my oatmeal has 150 kilocalories, um, and so that's quite a bit. But think about how much you might eat on a daily basis, right? 2,000, 2,500 kilocalories, um, and one bowl of oatmeal really isn't that much. Uh, makes you wonder why, or doesn't, I guess makes you understand why um, it's, you just get so hungry after oatmeal, right? Not that many compared to a total um, daily amount of food. Anyways, I hope this helped. I will stop rambling and I uh, hope you guys are all doing well and staying healthy and uh, we'll look forward to some videos to come soon.